here. Have I just been hit over the head? What is this build? Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This month's Boost My Build, we've got crazy, crazy, crazy builds. We've actually got the craziest build I've ever seen on a Boost My Build. This is a series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up, we put them back together, and we massively boost up your performance. If you get value of the video, please give it a like. It makes a big difference, especially this guy right here who just fell asleep. Subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, offering an amazing deal at nordvpn.com slash PCBuilder. Everyone loves the internet, but it's almost as scary as GPU prices. Take back control of your privacy and data with NordVPN using next generation encryption with just the click of a button. Even better, it blocks malware ads and allows you to change your regional location to get the most out of streaming services like Netflix. With a 30 day money back guarantee, and a huge discount on a two-year plan, plus one month free using our link in the description below, it's never been cheaper or easier to get protected. Level up your protection by going to nordvpn.com slash pcbuilder today. Trippy Steve, they love our channel. They found it very helpful. That's awesome. I appreciate that. They have been out of the building game a long time, so long they've lost track of what's needed to build a PC. They've only got the case, the storage, and the power supply. They don't mind switching out other things, but they want the case uh, since it's still brand new. They just bought this case. Okay, that's fine. They want Guild Wars 2. They want to play Elder Scrolls Online, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 on medium to high settings, 1080p. They want to do some coding with it. And their budget is $1,500, but they could go up to $2,000 if needed. Let's take a look at what you got. What in the holy heck is this thing? What is going on here? Have I just been hit over the head? What is this build? i7 4790K and you're gonna buy that for $235? No, the whole build is $1,350, but you're gonna buy the CPU for that? This is absolutely insane. This is a build from 2014, but I'm glad you submitted this in. Let's take a look. Let's take a look through history here. So you wanted to go with the i7 4790K. This, I, correct me if I'm wrong, down in the comments, 2014 is the year that's coming to mind right now as I'm thinking about maybe 2015, maybe 2013, the 4790K. It's been so long, I can't really remember all melds together. We are not gonna buy this thing new for $235. This is the kind of build that you put together if you're doing like an eBay special build and you wanna build something for less than a hundred bucks, right? This is just definitely not a build you put together with $1,500 to $1,900 to play 1080p gaming right now. Uh, you went with the Asus, I remember this board, the Asus Maximus 6. I remember thinking, ooh, how cool this board was back in the day. Yeah, but look how old it looks now. We've got the Cooler Master Hyper 212 for a cooler. I mean, if we want to use that, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm not even sure it's compatible with that socket, but uh, if I'm thinking about it, it probably is. And then we've got DDR3 memory. Has anybody been thinking about DDR3 memory in the last couple of years? I certainly haven't. Uh, I don't even know where you get it. I guess you just have to get it used at this point. I don't even know if they make it new. You're gonna pay $155 for 120 gigabyte SSD, SAT SSD. Again, I feel like 2014, now, I think we were playing less for that in 2014, but I don't even remember. We don't need SATA drives. We're, I, and the reason you're going SATA here is because the motherboard doesn't have an M.2. And this graphics card, man, R7260X. Again, I'm not sure if this is stuff that you already have, but you've already put pricing in this for this. And you said you were buying this stuff new, including this case, $200 for this case. Ace, what is this? Cooler Master H half X. This is like an ancient case from when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. A couple cool things that we've kind of lost in terms of technology is this, yeah, the side panel air vent here. Uh, now the reason that's gone away is because there's not really enough clearance anymore to put a fan in there, given how much uh, taller and wider and bigger graphics cards have gotten overall. I guess it's mostly the vertical clearance there. But look at this case. The other problems you're gonna have with this case, especially these older cases, is that when you go to put the graphics card in, this thing right here is good. The drive bays are gonna limit you. And then I don't even know what this hinge is here for. I don't really remember. I'd never done a build with this particular case. I am familiar with the half cases. Cooler Master has been making them forever. And then, you know, the, not even a PSU shroud down here. I don't know if you want it for the front panel IO, but you know, you can put these things in yourself if you get a case five and a quarter inch uh, drive bay. You can get these things for like 20 or $30 and put them in yourself. And then we get the power supply. $160 for this Corsair RM850. 
This, I think, that I can't even remember. I just, I'm so confused by this build. I don't even know where to start. I'm not even sure that they're making this particular unit any longer. They're certainly making the RM850. They're not making uh, maybe this version of it right now, but you put in $200 for this thing or $160? No, we're way overspending there. You're gonna be, keep those receipts in your hands because we're gonna be sending a lot of stuff back. Here we go. I called this the Welcome to 2022 Gaming PC because welcome to 2022! It's not 2014 anymore. And for $1,531, just at the bottom end of your budget, we are gonna get you a PC that plays games at 1440p and is from this decade. Starting off with the CPU, we got the Ryzen 5600X, decided to go this way, could certainly go with the i5-12400. However, I just feel like the motherboard selection for the 5600X is better. It doesn't cost that much more than the 12400. Could go with the 12400F too, if you wanna save some money. And remember, the 5600 uh, non-X is coming out any day now after this video comes out. So keep an eye out for that if you want to spend about that amount of money. For the cooler, just went with something super basic, super basic tower cooler, id cooling SE224 XT. We could have gone with that cooler master unit, but that thing's $45. And honestly, it's the same thing as the id cooling SE224 black. And that's what we're going to get you. So we're going to save you 20 bucks here and get you a really nice cooler. You wanted that ancient uh, Asus Maximus board. So I went ahead and said, okay, let's get you a really cool uh, B550 motherboard. This is probably why I did not go with the 12400 route is because their nice motherboards are stupidly expensive, but you can get the Asus ROG Strix B550F gaming for about $170, which is a great price. Has premium audio on it, just a phenomenal overall motherboard. We use this one in our uh, best 5600X gaming build. Great motherboard. If you wanna get the Wi-Fi version, it's about $20 more. For the memory, we actually got you DDR4 memory and I got you some RGB DDR4 memory, why not? Just a silicon power kit. We've used this in a, in a number of different builds. Uh, it's a 3200 CL16 kit, 16 gigabytes total, really all you need. Uh, we used it in the 5600G build and our recent i5-12400 build. It looks really nice. We got rid of that ridiculous SATA 120 gigabyte drive and for $99, I'm gonna get you one terabyte of storage. Not 120 gigabytes, one terabyte. This is the Sabrent Rocket, one terabyte. This is a phenomenal Gen 3 drive. It's gonna slot right in that motherboard. It's gonna be super fast. Don't need to worry about SATA cables and all that nonsense any longer. And it's cheaper than what you were gonna buy. But really, here's where I think the piece de resistance is. You had that, that ancient Sapphire card, but instead we're gonna go with the RX 6700 XT. Now this is an area, if you wanna spend more money, now yeah, you gave me another $400, I could have probably come up to almost a 3080 on this. And you said $1,500 was kind of your lower range of budget. So I decided to go, let's go 6700 XT. This is a great card over at Amazon right now for $650. These cards are coming down in price very, very quickly, especially on the AMD side. Not so much on the Nvidia side, although for about 650, you could also get a 3060 Ti, slightly lower performance, but I know some people really wanna have an Nvidia card, and if that's you, by all means, but you did have an AMD graphics card in there, even an ancient one before, so I decided to go with this with more performance. I decided to let you have your case. I mean, you spent $200 on this case. I, there is a lot better cases we could get for $200. I would recommend you don't don't do this case, but if if you're gonna have to, if you're like, I gotta have this case, go ahead. I just, I'm just gonna warn you though about this clearance here, and I would consider something like, for instance, the Fantex P500A is an amazing case that has amazing RGB in it. I've highlighted a number of Boost My Builds, but if you're gonna, if you're focused on this, we'll let you have it. And the power supply, let's go with something modern and better. I went with the MSI MPG uh, A650GF. This is an 80 plus gold certified unit, fully modular, uh, really nice, especially since we're gonna use that case that doesn't have a uh, power supply uh, shroud on it, a PSU shroud, so you're gonna have cables that you're gonna be able to see. So I got you something fully modular. This is A tier rated on the PSU cultist list. Right now I think it's going for $79 over at Amazon. We've used this on a number of builds, absolutely great unit. So there you go, for $1,531, we're gonna get you a PC that actually plays massive amounts of gaming at 1440p. And remember, we could go up on this as well. And we could also go up if we didn't spend so much on your case. So just one last zinger on your case. But overall, I hope you feel like your build 
is boosted. All right, we got Oatmeal 3. Oatmeal's building their very first PC. They want to game at 1440p and they want to get into video editing. That's why they put in 32 gigabytes of RAM. They want an all white build with RGB. They want to wait out the graphics card market. They're planning to buy parts 101, but this is what they're thinking. And their budget's around $1,500 Canadian. Okay, that's about 1,200 US dollars. I, this is starting to feel like a tall order for 1200 US dollars, especially given the current state of the PC part market in Canada, which I know is more challenging. Let's take a look. Okay, you finished 1555 Canadian dollars. So you're already $55 over your target budget. And I can see some problems right off the bat. The build overall is fine-ish, but there are some problematic parts in here. So let's start off with the CPU. So the i5-12400F, just for gaming, perfectly fine. But if you want to get into video editing, then definitely get the i5-12400. The difference between the F and non-F versions is the F does not have integrated graphics. So you want to get the non-F one because Intel QuickSync will allow the integrated graphics to work with your dedicated graphics card to render video and encode video much faster. You went with a massive cooler. Now, I love this cooler. I used it on our 5600X gaming build, $153. I, and I know that one of the challenges in Canada from doing other boost by builds with Canadian folks is that getting an all white build in Canada is very challenging. There's not a lot of white air coolers there. So I'm gonna guess this is probably one of the cheaper all white options, especially that comes LG 1700 ready. I believe this comes 1700 ready. If it doesn't, you can obviously reach out to Cooler Master for the bracket. Here's the first big problem though. We're gonna go with the ASRock B660 Pro RS. Now the problem with this board is in testing. A uh, hardware unbox did a great B660 testing. I recommend uh, checking out their videos on the B660 VRM testing. They found that this board, they, it was the micro ATX version of it, I believe. The VRM in it did not hold up, did not allow the CPU, the 12400, to run at the full frequency. So I'm telling you right now, you wanna avoid this motherboard. You went with two kits of Team Force T Delta RGB. Now I love these kits, don't get me wrong, but 3600 CL18, not really any faster than 3200 CL16. In fact, it's a pretty much the identical speed when it comes right down to it. And you got two of them for $220 total. I just feel like that's a lot of money to be spending on a budget gaming PC. Now, maybe it's because they're white, maybe it's because it's uh, uh, they have ARGB on them. We'll have to find out. The drive, I don't have a problem with the drive necessarily. It's a great budget gaming drive, but if we are gonna do a lot of heavy uh, writes, I'd probably like to see something with a DRAM cache. This has a host memory buffer process on it. Again, perfectly fine for a budget gaming PC, but when we're talking about also adding in the video editing, I'd like to see something a little little bit more on the prosumer side. You went with the RTX 3050. I don't hate this graphics card. Uh, right now it's selling for $500 Canadian. I'm not quite sure what that is, about $400 US. That's about what they're going for in the US as well. The problem with the 3050 right now is it's overpriced, majorly overpriced. Now, you also want to do video editing. I would tend to prefer an NVIDIA card here for video editing. For the case, Cooler Master Master Bike. I love this case, it looks great. Overall, it's a nice case, and it's, especially if you want all white, this is a great uh, case to start with. Yeah, it just, it looks phenomenal. What can you say about it? For $109 Canadian, it's actually not a bad price either. So we'll probably end up sticking out with this case. For the power supply, I'll be honest, I had not, I'm not familiar with this unit, the Cooler Master V Gold V2 650 watt. Uh, it, I looked it up, it's, you know, it's eight tier rated on the PSU cultist list. So that looks great on this, but for $1,555, I just feel like we're leaving performance on the table here. I feel like we're a little focused on the all whiteness maybe over that performance. I, I call this the O Canada, really 1440p gaming build. Here's the thing is that 3050 you had is not going to be 1440p gaming capable. It's at best 1080p gaming capable. That being said, I know the graphic card market is still very much upside down. So let's see what we can do right now though to get you a better build. For $1,573, just $20 more than you were gonna spend, I think we're gonna get you something much better. Let's check it out. Starting off with the CPU, we went with the i5-12400. I almost switched it to 5600X. The, the Canadian market is really tough in terms of coolers for LGA 1700 sockets. Um, and they're also just tough kind of overall in terms of the motherboards, the B660 motherboards. So I almost switched out. Now the Ryzen 5600X is about $50 more Canadian than this CPU, but 
the 5600X does not have that integrated graphics. It's not gonna allow you to encode the video as easily, but it probably would be just fine if you're just dabbling in it. If you're doing professional level work, I, you know, obviously move up to like an i5 12600K. One thing though, we did have to largely abandon the parts being all white. We did stick it out with your case. Let's just start there on the theme stuff. Uh, so I went ahead and stuck it out with your case. Your case is great. 109 Canadian, that's like 88, $85, I think, US. That's not a bad price to pay. You're getting uh, ARGB. You're getting a great looking all white case. And that way we can kind of preserve the, the white build part of it. And for the PSU, this turned out to be a really great price PSU at about $80 Canadian. A tier, fully modular. So we did, we went and stuck that out. Also all white for the case. But for the rest of the build, we went with just the cheapest parts we could find in terms of overall getting getting the job done. And we went with the Deep Cool Gamex 400S. Now this is just a kind of a basic tower cooler. I'd recommend any of the basic tower coolers. But remember, you're gonna have to get the LGA 1700 mounting bracket uh, from Deep Cool in this case, or if you go with another cooler vendor instead, from them. It doesn't seem like Amazon or other places are selling a lot of the uh, LGA 1700 cooler brackets. I mean, I saw one on there for like $35 Canadian. That's insane. For the motherboard, motherboards for B660 are a real problem. I'm, I'm gonna start calling them a problem too because they frankly are. However, the MSI Pro B660M-A is one of the motherboards that does a great job. Now you're gonna get entry level audio on this thing. I really did wanna get you better audio. You just don't have the money in your budget. Um, even if I cut out the white case, you couldn't do it. And eventually you'll get yourself an external DAC instead or maybe a sound card. But overall, this has plenty of connectivity to it. Uh, it'll get you started on your journey. The memory, I, I went ahead and ditched the RGB kit. I know you really wanted it, but for $220 Canadian, it was killing us. I went with a much cheaper $138, $139 two by 16 gigabyte kit. I'm just gonna be frank with you. You don't have enough money to get both the all white and the 1440p gaming aspect of it. I almost just knocked you down to two by 16 gigabytes here and got one of those kits. You could potentially do that and add a second kit in later when you get some more money. I found a drive, prosumer level drive, a Kingston A2000, not, oh, it's $6 more. I would recommend this instead of the Silicon Power one. Silicon Power, great budget NVMe. This is more on the prosumer level. I would love to get you more storage too. Again, your budget is really tight here. And we went for the graphics card. We got an RX 6600 XT. Right now, Newegg Canada has the RX 6600 XT, the ASUS ROG Strix version of it for $649 Canadian, Canadian, which is about what it sells for in the US, I believe, if I'm if my math is working uh, correctly. If it's not, let me know down in the comments. I really did try and get you a 6700 XT or like a 3060 Ti, but they're just too expensive expensive right now. I could not fit it into your budget. So if you are going to wait, maybe those are the cards that you're going to want to target and kind of hold out. I don't know if they're going to get to that price level. If you want to build this now though, the 6600 XT will be able to play quite a few games in 1440p, even more if you turn the settings down just a little bit uh, from like ultra and high to maybe medium settings. Or of course, this card just absolutely rocks it at 1080p. So you could do that instead. Overall, we got you a much better system for $1,573, just about what you were spending before. We made sure to get you a CPU that will actually help you with the video encoding. We preserved the all white aspect of your build. And probably the most important thing is what you we got your graphics card that will actually be able to play games at 1440p, select games, select games, uh, even more if you turn the settings down. And of course there's FSR and RSR coming that you could definitely use for that. It is still a sore point. You can, of course, save some more money, wait for the graphics card market to improve. But overall, I think we got you a pretty good build for $1,573. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. We've got wholesome gaming content with a Kermit the Frog picture. That's awesome, love it. Dear PC Builder, they love our content. They wanna build a new PC. They're digging in, they're not sure what's good or not. They have a budget of $2,200. They're in the Netherlands, so that's about 2,000 euros. Everything we're gonna be doing is in euros. I wanna play games like Fortnite, CSGO, Warzone, and more. So obviously a lot of first person shooters. Let's see what you've got. Okay, so just under 2,000 total euros here. We've got a system that's, I, I, yeah, everything works together. There's nothing technically wrong with this. However, we're massively, massively overspending. Let's jump in. 
First of all, uh, RTX 3060 in the Netherlands, I've checked around and uh, I have seen that you can get these things cheaper. It might be that you want the EVGA all black. In fact, I'm noticing a theme throughout the whole uh, build here, which is that I want all the black, jet black things. Jet black, jet black, jet black. Okay, but let's check this out. I see some big issues also. For instance, I noticed that we've got the Corsair 4000D case, great case, not a bad price you're getting for it. So what's the problem then, Jason? Well, the problem is you were putting in a, an ITX motherboard. That's an, look how small that little thing is. An ITX motherboard into that, and why? Why are we doing that? Just doesn't make any sense. If you wanna do a small form factor build with this, by all means, go right ahead. But then get an ITX case. Don't get a, a, a full-size ATX mid-tower case. That's kind of crazy. Motherboard's $172, it's not cheap. 172 euros, I should say, which is even more in US dollars. And then we've got an i7-11700K. And let me just tell you right now, stop buying 11th gen, stop it. Just no more 11th gen. Frankly, even the 10th gen is kind of on my cutting block. And at the higher end, don't buy the 11700K. I think Gamers Nexus or somebody called this a waste of sand, kind of a black mark on Intel overall. For the cooler, I don't mind this cooler. Again, I think here we all, it's all black all the time. And then we've got the mirrored, the mirrored pump head. That's fine, uh, we could certainly go with this cooler, but one thing I don't quite understand then is if we're going all black, all black, and I certainly see, again, on the motherboard, even though it's ITX, all black, uh, why are we going with all these black RGB fans then? So it seems like we also do want some RGB here, so it kinda, it's a little puzzling that we didn't go with a cooler for this much, $123 or 123 euros, that also doesn't have some RGB on the fans itself. For the memory, nothing wrong with the memory, 3200 CL16. I can tell you also don't want RGB on the memory maybe. I'm just, I'm kinda confused. For the storage, 970 Evo, I, I don't have a problem with this drive. It's This is a little bit more than you pay in the States for it. But still, as a prosumer level drive, fine. You can always go budget uh, on the SSD though, and probably save a little bit of money. Power supply is fine. Corsair RM, I don't have any problem. Fully modular unit, seems like you're getting it at a decent-ish price. You're paying full freight for Windows. I've said in the past, you can also buy a discounted key, but if that makes you uncomfortable, not the worst thing in the world. And then again, we are spending $80 on these Corsair, uh, very nice RGB fans, three of them. Not huge amount of money for three fans. It makes me wonder, when, why are we buying these fans when we probably could have done something different. For 1,975 euros, I feel like we're just leaving tons of performance on the table here. Just absolutely tons of it. Let's see what we can do. So I call this way better gaming. Why? Because it's way better gaming. That's why. Let's jump into it. The first thing I wanted to look at is the overall price. We were able to do this for almost 100 euros less than you were. And you're gonna see, we got a ton more performance. Let's jump into it. The first thing I did is I made sure to build this around a graphics card. And the most I could fit in here, I almost could fit a 3080, almost, but not quite is the GeForce RTX 3070. Now, as long as we ditch the, it has to be all black thing. These graphics cards, you're only ever gonna see the top of them anyway. This is a great graphics card. 3070 for 749 euros is a pretty dang good deal. And this has massive more performance than that 3060 does. So this is the first place I start in any gaming focused build. What's the biggest graphics card I can cram in there? Then on the CPU side, we went with the i5-12600K for less money than the i7-11700K and the 12600 k knocks the snot out of that 11th gen thing. Yes, you say, well, Jason, the other one's got more cores no, the, the P cores on the 12600K are, the performance cores are far more performative than on the 11th gen. It was a huge leap in performance. Don't get stuck in this old thinking, oh, more cores, more threads, whatever. It's also about how fast those cores are and the 12600 cores are way faster. And of course, it's got four E cores as well. So it's got 10 cores and it's got 16 threads. This is an absolute beast of a gaming CPU or even productivity. For the motherboard, I went with a Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X and I think this motherboard it's only a little bit more than you were gonna spend on that B660 motherboard. When you get this board, the first thing you should do after you get the system to post, update to the absolute latest BIOS you can. That's gonna fix all of the XMP issues, all the not detecting drive issues. Gigabyte's not the only folks who had problems on the Z690 platform initially. Uh, kind of everybody did in, in one thing or other. The great thing about this motherboard is it comes with ALC1220 audio codec down here. Comes with a fantastic VRM on this thing. Four M.2s, just an overall great motherboard for 
super cheap price, 189 euros. For the cooler, I went with the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240 Illusion. Now we went with the white version of this in our 5600X gaming build. Certainly this will also cool an i5-12600K. You can get something beefier if you want, but I just figured we want some RGB on those fans. Now, don't worry, this is not the white one. If you go to, and this is what's in PC Part Picker, if you go to Amazon Netherlands, they have the black one on for 88 euros right now, which is a steal. It's got really nice effects on the pump head, really nice looking fans. I love the halo effect on them. I think you're gonna like them too. Almost half the price of what you were gonna spend on a non-RGB cooler. For the memory, you went with an all black kit, I did the same, but I went with 3600CL16 memory. I feel like this is probably the sweet spot only $10 more than what you were gonna spend, another two by eight gigabyte kit, so why not spend a little bit more money and possibly pick up a little bit of performance? We stuck it out with your SSD, it was absolutely fine, but on the case, now this is one thing that people just, they get the Corsair 4000D airflow case, and then they wanna populate it with all these very expensive Corsair IQ fans, and it ends up costing way more money. You can just get the Corsair IQ 4000X that has the RGB fans. Yes, this is, this is a glass plate here, but there's plenty of airflow along the sides here. Absolutely fine, tons of airflow in this thing, and it looks phenomenal. You are gonna need one more fan for the rear exhaust of the case, so I just grabbed a matching Cooler Master Master fan. Halo fan, I absolutely love these. They look phenomenal, and for 14 euros, it's cheaper than the ones that you were gonna pick out. Stuck with your power supply, and I went ahead and left the Windows license in there. Just know you could save even more money if you went with a third-party key reseller, but for $1,867, you still have about 130 euros to spend if you really wanted to spend it. I just decided to save the money, but overall, I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Mr. Bear, kitty food. Oh, now you perked up. Yes, I'll give you treats after this. Thank you for joining us on this month's Boost My Build. Remember, if you got value of the video, give it a like. It makes a big difference, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. And with that, apparently, we will catch you on the next one.